One thing I always believe in is, if you use something frequently, then make sure you use it effectively. Hi there, this is Mina once again and in this video I'm going to share with you my top 10 Mac OS tips and tricks. Like always, all the useful resources used in this video will be in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And with that being said, let's get started, shall we? So let's start with something that has already been there since 2000, but chances are you might have not noticed it. And Steve Jobs used to call it the genie effect. So what does it do? Well, if you hold down the shift key and then click on the minimize button, it will minimize all the window in a beautiful slow motion. And it works the other way around too. Now is it something useful? Probably not. But it is definitely a fun trick that you can show to your Windows friend. Another useful feature that has been there for a while but only handful of people know about it is text clipping. So let's say you find an interesting content on the internet that you would like to temporarily save for later use. Now usually I would email that information to myself. But if it's just a temporary thing then here is what I do. Select the piece of text and then bring your pointer over it. Now press and hold the mouse and slowly drag it to your desktop or anywhere you want and it will form a text file. And guess what, it works other way around too. So if you have a text file, you can drag and drop it to any document. But wait, there is more. Say you want to revisit a website after some time, but you are not much into bookmarking or pocket stuff. So here is what you can do. Simply drag and drop the URL to your desktop or in your dock and it will become a web link. And since it is right in front of your eyes, you will definitely remember to check it out later. Ok, now some of you might already know this, but if I double tap on the edge of the window, it will maximize that window in that particular direction. It also works for the corner as well. But what if I have to compare two windows side by side, kind of like how you do in windows. So here's how you can do it with split view. So if you click and hold the green button for a few seconds, you will notice the current window will shrink and one half of the desktop will become highlighted. And then simply click on the window that you want to use in a side by side mode. And yes, obviously, once you are done, you can simply minimize the application to get back to the previous format. One of my favorite features in macOS is the preview option that you get from the spacebar. So you can use it to preview image, video or even a sound file. And I'm pretty sure most of you already know about this. But do you know it also works while uploading a file? For instance, here is my regular setup look like. Usually we only upload the files that we have recently edited, right? So go to the upload files and click on all my files. And then set up the filter as last modified. This way even if you have saved your files in different location, you will be able to find them all here. Now in this mode, you cannot see the preview of the file you are going to upload. Well, not exactly. If you press the spacebar, the preview will also work here. Now this one is my favorite that I accidentally discovered. So one day while I was editing my videos in Final Cut Pro, I wanted to fast forward for the clip, but I didn't know where to find this option. Yes, obviously you can do a quick Google search, but wait, there is even a quicker way. So Mac OS comes with a built-in help feature where it keeps an index of all the menu feature. All you have to do is search for it by name. For instance, from my past experience, I can tell if the option is there, it should have the keyword fast or slow. Type that in the search box and it will show you exactly where you can find it. Let's take another example where I find this feature super useful. So few days back my FCP crashed due to some power failure and I lost all my saved projects. Well few hours of digging on the internet didn't lead me anywhere. So I finally searched for backups in the search box and it gave me the complete backup in different time stream. Now let's try to do this in other application, let's say Photoshop. So I am new to this application and don't know where to find the blur option. Well just type in in the search box and it will show you the position right there. And the same thing works in terminal. If I want to change the color of the terminal but I don't know where to find it, simply search for it. 
However, there is a limitation to this. For instance, in Google Docs, say I want to search for a print option, then this tool will work. But if I want to go one step deeper, like say I want to search for voice input, then I will have to store that in the help section of the web interface. Overall, this trick has been a lifesaver for me in lot of situations. And the best of all, you don't have to remember anything. Like all the other OS, you can also create a hidden folder in Mac OS. Just create a new folder and append a period in front of its name, like .secret or something like that. Now everything that you place inside this folder won't be visible to normalize. However, until now the biggest issue with this approach is, to view your hidden files in folder, you must have to use terminal or go to folder option. There was no way to do it from the finder. But this has recently changed in macOS Sierra. Now all you have to do to hide and unhide your folder is press command shift and period and that's it. Now for some of you this may not be a big deal. But if you are a programmer then this can be a complete game changer for you. However this option may not work right out of the box for everyone. So if you face any such problem all you have to do is enable this from the terminal first. That is go to your terminal and type this command. I will also have them in the description of this video. Now fortunately I have a 2TB fusion drive on this beast. But if you are using a macbook then chances are you are running a 256GB or even lesser SSD. And in that case storage is definitely an issue right? So here is what you can do to get your space back. Instead of deleting thousands of small files from your desktop, why not delete one huge file that you don't need. Earlier I used to do this with applications like this inventory x. But guess what, you don't need any app for that. Here is what you can do with the finder. Open up your finder window and go to all my files. By the way, if you cannot find this option, you need to enable it from the finder preference. Ok, now once you are in the all my files section, click on the gear icon and select show search criteria. Get rid of all the extra operators, we only need to work with one. Now select any for file types and then set the filter to file size and input a size greater than 1 GB. And there you go, you will get all the biggest files on your computer. You can also sort them by clicking on the option size and then see which of the files you don't need and then delete them. The one thing to keep in mind is, once you delete a file from here, you will also have to go to your trash folder and delete it from there as well. But in case you don't want to do that, then press option command and delete to delete the file permanently. And don't worry, I will have all these shortcuts in the description as well. Ok now let's say you are working on some documents on your Mac and now you want to save that file. Well the traditional way to do that is go to file and then click on save, right? Although I usually close the window to do that but anyways you should not do that. Ok there is even a quicker way. To save the folder simply click on the file name and then type the name you want to give. Plus you can also drag the folder icon to save it anywhere you want. And guess what, it also works for the folder name as well. For instance, if you are on finder and want to get to a 1 or 2 level up, then simply right click on the folder name and you will see the complete directory. As a YouTuber, I have to frequently take screenshots of my macOS screen and then upload it as a thumbnail. And thankfully, there is a built in option to do that. If you don't know, simply press Command Shift and 4. But there is one big issue with that. By default, Mac OS save all your screenshot in PNG format, which although is a best option when it comes to text, but file size are pretty big, right? To give you an idea, following are the two screenshots of my 5K iMac, and although there is no noticeable difference in quality, the PNG file is over 5 MB, while the JPEG screenshot is just 32 KB. So long story short, if you are going to upload screenshots on the web, then make sure you change the default format to JPEG. And here is how to do that. Launch your terminal and then copy paste the following command. And while you are at it, it also makes sense to change the location of the screenshot. Again, to do that, open up your terminal and type the following command. Though make sure you replace this Mrinal Shah name with your system username. Or you can also drag and drop the screenshot folder in the terminal just to get its path. Now this one is more scary than useful. So macOS locks pretty much everything that you have ever downloaded. So if you have lost any file or if you just want to see what your spouse or children are downloading, 
then you can do so by simply typing a terminal command and it will reveal everything that you have ever downloaded with a web browser no matter which browser do you use or even if you have deleted your browser history the logs will be there so simply open up your terminal and type this command and it will show you everything that you have ever downloaded the first thing that i have downloaded was the open source torrent client and some of the applications and the last thing that i have downloaded is a youtube video now this is helpful if you have lost some files and don't remember where you have downloaded from but most of you will find it scary well fortunately there is an option to clear that history as well simply type in the following command now there is one less thing to worry about when the fbi knocks at your door Well this is all for now share your favorite mac os tips in the comment section below and yes follow me on twitter and subscribe to this channel if you want to so that's it for now it's been all signing off and i will see you in the next one like always thank you for watching